All right. Thank you so much, Russ, uh, for keeping us updated on that. Of course, we've been watching along with uh, Lena Lai, who's been following this story uh, since it all happened last June. Certainly uh, our, our attention now turns south of Cleveland to the city of Akron. Uh, Lena, you kept an eye on this press conference as it came out, and of course you've been covering this. What do you take away from this today? Well, let's, in case you're just joining us, Attorney General Dave Yost announcing this afternoon the no bill, that is the Akron grand jury voted not to indict the eight Akron police officers for the shooting death of Jalen Walker last June. Now, those officers fired more than 90 rounds at Jalen Walker after a foot chase. At least 46 of those rounds hit Walker. Now, crucially, Yost pointed to Walker's actions before the foot chase that Walker had fired his gun earlier during the police pursuit by car. Yost also pointed that right before police opened fire, Walker had made some sort of cross hand motion toward his waistband and turned his body toward officers. Here is the attorney general's explanation of the grand jury decision today. The law allows officers to use deadly force to defend themselves or others against a deadly threat. Now, the Summit County Grand Jury, people who live there in the community, spent more than a week reviewing the BCI investigation. The grand jury concluded that the officers were legally justified in their use of force. The grand jury just a little while ago issued what is called a no bill, meaning that there will be no state criminal action, no charges at the state level. But there could be civil action afterward. Now, it turns out Walker was not armed at the time of the foot chase. Police later found the gun on the seat of his abandoned car. And the initial reason for the attempted traffic stop on that night last summer was a broken taillight. 25-year-old Walker had no criminal history, no drugs or alcohol in his system. He had recently purchased the gun, and prosecutors say they don't even believe he even had ever fired a gun before that fateful day. Now, Betsy and Jay, you know, the, there's been a lot of talk about what was his motive. Prosecutors say they are not willing to speculate. But we do know that Walker lost his fiance. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, before this this night in June, and we do know that he was emotionally upset. His fiance had recently died in a car crash. He was wearing a wedding band, which mm -hmm. he left on the seat of his car with the weapon with that, that he had previously fired. I want to drill down on something that we were talking about as Russ and Stephanie were talking, and that's about the definition of what police officers perceive as a force of action against them that they yeah. deem to see to to be life threatening. Um, you were saying that that bar is very low. Yeah, in the that threshold for that is very low. It, it basically boils down to does the police officer have a reason reasonably feel that his life is in danger now. Prosecutors were pointing to the fact that that police officers during that foot chase had every reason to believe that Walker still had that gun. Right. And when prosecutors say he made that cross hand motion toward his waistband and turned, uh, that would be a justifiable reason to use deadly force. Right. Now, when you talk about excessive force, you know, then then you 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 go into other sets of arguments. You know, it, uh, Attorney General Yost did point out that you know when you have eight officers each reacting independently and totaling up to more than 90 bullets, it, it is very upsetting to see. We've seen the the uh, body cam video. It is very upsetting. But again, the grand jury today uh, voting not to indict these officers. Right. Attorney Jost, of course, saying that there were over 100 interviews conducted yeah. in this. This was an extensive investigation, many search warrants, 140 plus items into evidence. Mm -hmm. Which we will all shortly see on the Attorney General's is, website. It has they been are taking that, uh, They are taking that unusual step. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I want to ask you about that. You say that. unusual step. Early on in this investigation, there were calls from city leaders, community members, even yeah. media, that they were not being transparent enough. Right. It seems that uh, Attorney General Yost is going above and beyond what he needs to now, basically saying 
Here is everything. Now, there's certain information that he cannot release to the public about the grand jury, including the vote. Mm -hmm. What was that final vote? We don't know. They needed seven yeses mm -hmm. to move forward with charges. They did not get that. But in your history here, in your opinion, this, this does seem to be way above and beyond in terms of what they have to show us. Yeah, and, and, and part, the reasoning is clear. I mean, when, when the community has a lot of questions, you know, you have to be transparent if, you know, you want to satisfy those who still have so many questions. And, you know, as soon as I get a chance, I'll be heading over there and pouring over all this evidence because a lot of the questions that we have ourselves mm -hmm. have not been answered. There right. is a lot, certainly, to go through. Lena Lai, thank you very mm -hmm. much for all your in-depth analysis and your insight on that.